This is the last of this series, um, and thank you all so much for coming. Um, I'm very pleased to uh, be hosting Elizabeth Shannon, Dr. Elizabeth Shannon, actually, this evening. Um, the talk is called We Don't Need No Education. Um, I just want to really quickly bring your attention to some of these surveys in the middle. Um, if you would be so kind to fill one out if you've been to any of the roundtables or after this one this evening, um, it will help us to continue doing what we're doing. Um, and as you all know, these are open format discussions and topics in contemporary art uh, proposed and moderated by members of the art community in Miami and beyond. Um, and right, very pleased to have Liz share some of her thoughts about education. We will turn it into an open format moderated discussion um, after we um, very quickly. share some very quickly. Quickly. Yeah. So feel free to contribute. So thank you. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, I'm terrified to be doing this. Um, so if I ramble, I apologize. Also, I had too much coffee, so I probably will. Um, Amanda really kindly asked me to do a roundtable and asked me what I would like to talk about, and I didn't know, and I really agonized about it, and then I thought, no, I do know what I want to talk about. I want to find out more about some of the things that people keep talking to me about um, since I arrived in Miami. And I guess for context, I should tell you, I'm the Knight Curatorial Fellow at the Bass Museum of Art. Um, I arrived last October. I've never been to Miami before. I knew Miami was super hot for art, and that was pretty much it. Um, so it's been a really steep learning curve for me. Um, so I will almost inevitably say lots of stuff that is highly inaccurate, um, and you can pick me up on it and shout at me, that's fine. I'm not insulted. Um, and you're from? Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> well, I'm English, um, but I lived in Scotland for about 12 years and I did all my studying in Scotland. So I'm really talking about something I know nothing about in an American context. So I trust you will all point out all the things I'm wrong about. So um, I've been talking to um, a lot of kind of people in the art community, been doing lots of studio visits, attempting to do lots of studio visits, and just trying to get a feel for what's going on in Miami, what people are concerned about or not. And one subject that keeps repeatedly coming up is this idea that there is some sort of lack in Miami in terms of a really, really high profile international MFA program. I have no idea if this is actually a lack or not. And I know that there are MFA programs here. So the first thing I want to say is I am absolutely not denigrating anybody who is either doing um, a higher education art history or fine art course in Miami or in South Florida because I know there's things going on that I almost inevitably don't know about, so fill me in. Um, having said that, um, I was talking to Shul, do it, Dennis Schilling, right? Sure. Okay, so I saw Dennis Shaw last week and he said I could quote him that the lack of an internationally regarded MFA program was the number one issue in Miami's art community at the moment. I have no idea what you'll think of that, and I'm sure you'll tell me um, as we go along. So, that was kind of the background um, to me wanting to talk about this. I hope you like my picture of an owl. <laughs> so, so, I was thinking about it a bit, and um, this, this was, sorry, zooming back to when I was still trying to figure out what I was going to talk about. And it coincided with um, this huge fire, which you may or may not be aware of, um, took place at Glasgow School of Art. Um, I did my undergraduate degree at Glasgow University. Um, I'm not somebody who has fine art training, um, and I wish I did have that, but would be a horrible artist, I'd imagine. Um, and when I was at university, I didn't spend an awful lot of time at the art school, and it was only towards the end of my degree course that I sort of met artists who were studying there. Um, and I was doing history of art and English literature, so I really should have discovered the art school a lot earlier than I did. Um, so this is Glasgow School of Art. This is also, unfortunately, the building that um, had the fire. Um, so, the things that attracted me to Glasgow School of Art. The people at Glasgow School of Art, this isn't Glasgow, by the way, so much better looking than anybody who was at the university. It was. We went there, we went to the Vic, which was their... Um, their kind of nightclub thing, um, and my jaw dropped. I was like, my God, all the beautiful people are here. Why are they not at the university? 
I don't know why. Anyway, everybody seemed much more stylish and sophisticated, and they played the Smiths, so pretty much sold. Okay, what's next? Okay. So, um, one of the things that started almost immediately upon the art school catching on fire was my Facebook feed filled up with loads of my friends who'd been to the art school, really upset, obviously, that the art school was on fire. And one thing I noticed that really, I was really interested in and kind of really touched by was the really emotional response that people had to the fact that one of the main buildings was on fire. I should say that the MAC, um, the building that was on fire, is a really important building within Glasgow. Um, it's probably one of the most important architectural landmarks in the city. And people have a really, really big connection to it, even people who didn't study at the art school. And there was a lot of concern that the whole thing was going to just be destroyed, and that's how it looked to start with. So this is a friend of mine. Um, saying, you know, we watched the firefighters trying to tackle the blaze from the roof of her, her partner's flat. And it was so depressing, I'm so pleased everyone got out, no one was hurt, and the repercussions are going to be massive. And it was kind of that end point that I thought was interesting. Right, so this is the next thing that happened, is that friends of mine who'd studied at the art school, at the end of um, everybody's sort of period of study, so when, just before they graduate, everybody has their photograph taken, as a year class, like this is like sort of fine art. No, this I think this is photography, the photography class from like 2002. They have their picture taken on the steps of the Mac, and I just started to see more and more and more of them from you know like the 1980s onwards. So there's another one as well, and I just started to think about how important that connection is, and how a lot of the people that are in this picture, they're all still in contact. A lot of them, they maybe didn't all get on. They maybe had a horrible time at art school. I know for a fact that some of my friends did not have the greatest experience. They clashed with tutors. They didn't get good grades in the end. They abandoned art altogether. But they still have this connection that's kind of forged through their undergraduate or their postgraduate studies. And then I started thinking about that in terms of this perceived, mm, accurate or not, lack within Miami. Um, and was wondering whether this was actually something important. So these are just totally random photographs of um, like art students' leagues and things like that. So, so this is this is just kind of something that I really want to hear what you all think about. I want this to kind of be a starting point. Um, and I just wanted to check. This might be really unfair. Um, how many people here maybe studied fine art or history of art or something like that within South Florida? Okay, cool. Quite a few people. Um, how many people did maybe like MFAs or kind of graduate studies in South Florida? Cool. Okay, a couple. Um, how many people went away from South Florida to study? Yes, in okay. Um, so I just kind of want to get a discussion started about whether this is something that is actually worth having a discussion about. Um, I've kind of got a number of points and ways we can take it, um, but just to start with, is I want to know from you guys, is there a lack here? Yes. Yeah. Well, I want to say the person who said, told you there was a lack, Mr. Scholl, doesn't help the ones that exist. Okay. They don't do anything to help. We, we are out in, in recycled so can me, buildings. Can you tell me? You I'm at work. FIU. Okay. And what do you do at FIU? I have a graduate seminar, I teach painting, I'm head of painting. Oh, great. Um, but we get no help. Okay. We're out there on our own. Rick Scott taking every crumb away. And that's not going to thrive with this kind of criticism that you get from... No, I'm, I'm, no you didn't do it. <laughs> I'm not even... No, <laughs> really? like, well, every, every, culture, culture, I don't almost every time I come to a panel here, there's no art school. Wait, well, school? <laughs> FIU. <laughs> Every time, not you. That's why I came and I said, I've had it. No, no, it's good. Every panel devolves into, well, we don't have a skill at all. 
You know what you do have schools, you don't give a crap about them, and we get, we get no support um, from the collectors, from any of those people who are saying that. Well, what kind of support do you, do you feel that you need from collectors? Because that, I mean, this is another issue, and I apologize ahead of time, I'm going to ask loads of really naive questions. Because, like, Scotland does not have a collector base. Mm. So this, is, this has been one thing that's been weird for me since I arrived. Like, I see all these, this is going to sound really odd, all these similarities between Glasgow and Miami. Not weather related. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to me, like they're um, they've got similar size art communities, similarly friendly and welcoming by and large. Um, kind of manageable art communities where you can kind of come in and it's not completely overwhelming. And, but Glasgow has like no collectors, no collectors native to Scotland at all. It's got maybe three commercial galleries of any serious worth. So it's been interesting for me to come to Miami and hear people say, you know, the collectors are my work, and I'm like, you have collectors. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why am I not representing? It's like, God, there are galleries here. Whoa, more than three. I kind of like to know what they have in mind. What How do they need? support? What well, if we need we need, collectors. we need to have? So, so <laughs> you charge tuition at the university? <laughs> um, you went to an expensive school after FIU, right? Well, we don't charge that much, do we? I don't know. I don't know what you charge for your Pretty much rock bottom. Well, this is, I mean, this is another issue. Um, we're a space school. Right. I mean, this is, this is another issue that also plays in um, kind of British... Uh, I'm still talking about Scotland has been British until late next week. Um, British arts education, which is, you know, how much it costs. And I mean, I used to, I mean, I, so I did a PhD and I did it in St. Andrews, which is a sort of hilarious place to do a PhD if you want to be snooty. Um, and I have debt, but it's no way near the level of debt I would have had had I been a foreign student, right? So, and I know that there's also a very big and very important debate about, well, first of all, is it even necessary if you have any qualifications, or particularly for a lot of artists, an MFA, and if you get one, how much should you pay for one, and is it worth what you pay? Um, I think that these discussions are um, always boiled down to something pretty cynical, and um, suddenly artists are judged on how much money you're making, how popular are you? What rich person follows you around? And, can, you know, sorry, can you tell me what your outfit? what your background is? Or, or are you an artist? Do you, you teach? Yes, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. I teach. Um, I started very late in life and didn't have a college degree. So in my 40s, I went to Florida International University mm -hmm. because it's affordable and it's a state school. Mm -hmm. um, but I always wanted to go to school to improve my my mind. Right. And to establish a community of like minded, smart people that, you know, could brainstorm with me so that we could rethink things, get greater ideas, and show each other our work. Yeah. I think that over time and I've been teaching I I've taught a lot and et cetera, I have seen the degradation of that idea. Um, in fact, if I want students to read something, I mostly have to read to them. Uh, out a out. picture that illustrates your very public. Okay, so <laughs> the idea that, that someone, someone, some rich collector, you know, and I don't know where he went to school, and no one would really care because he's just buying art. He's not making art. He's not, you know, he's just one of those people that finances things. He probably owns Jeff Koons. And uh, I think that that is uh, a bad reason to judge a university situation. Um, I would say the three quarters of the heavy hitters that are known in Miami went through FIU. Mostly undergraduate, and then they were encouraged by a bunch of people like Dennis Schultz, go out and go to Yale or go out and go to UCLA, go out to one of those schools, acquire a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt, then come back, and if you want, I might buy your work because of that 
prestige. Um, Dave Hickey just quit the art world, I think yesterday, yeah. Yeah. Um, and wrote about it in a really poetic way, um, sort of saying the things I'm trying to say now. Okay. So I think that you know, if you're bent and determined to become successful, you ought to go and get a business degree. Because an art degree is, is, is not that safety net. An art degree is so that you can be around artists and make art. That's about it. So this idea of, of kind of forming a community around and well around that's well, really important. The community. Okay. I mean, to me, I, I am still I, a lot of my friends are are, are, make, are art makers, mm -hmm. and we have gotten together because of that. And you know, we have this foaming at the mouth desire to make more. Talk about it with each other. Um, that's the kind of community you want to establish when you're in school. I mean, I think one one argument that I can bring from my sort of knowledge of people who went to uh, Black School of Art about, I mean, they have not always had a really well respected, internationally attractive um, MFA. There's no doubt about it, um, and it may not be internationally attractive forever. I mean, a lot of this depends on things like, I guess, the economic situation internationally. It depends on who's on the teaching staff. It depends on how successful the people who come out of that course are. Oh, it also depends on what's on TV. Oh, how so? Sorry. Tell me more. You know, like some exotic thing from Netflix that happens in Glasgow. Oh, that's not happening very often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no train spotting and that was in Glasgow. <laughs> 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 Uh, but I'm interested in this idea of community because um, when I when I went back to studying um, to do my PhD, I, I went back with exactly that sort of um, enthusiasm. So I went to St Andrews for I mean a couple of my friends were like, oh my god, you'll die if you go there because I don't probably don't know what to say. It's very very tiny. It's like two streets, and all the really posh people go there, and it's it's like the south of England but in Scotland, which was everything I was trying to escape when I moved to Scotland. Um, but I went there because I wanted to study history photography and it was the only place in the whole country that was doing a tour course in history photography, which I thought I needed because I didn't know if I would remember how to write an essay, probably. Um, so I'd been out of education for about five years. And I got there and where are all the other students? And it turned out no one else had signed up for the course that year. And the head of the course had had a heart attack and wasn't teaching. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, so I was just really relieved I wasn't paying foreign fees, frankly, for that. Um, but I know that there are, there are now kind of op other options rather than going to an institution of any kind to kind of educate yourself, but you may miss out on this um, kind of like-minded community. Would, does anyone like virulently disagree with this or agree or I mean, can anyone speak to that? Or even speaking to the, um, you know, people who've maybe left Miami to go and do MSA courses and look at the cheap What's the question? Oh. Well, like, what was the benefit of leaving Miami in order? Or was there a benefit? Did you? Well, of course. Yeah. Because the, I went to FYU for a year and, and left there and went to school in California. I went to Cal Arts for grad school and was like... Why did you decide to go to Cal Arts particularly? Uh, because one of my professors at FIU had a friend that and I started looking into it, I was like, oh, this place is a great history, and it turned out some good artists, and, mm -hmm. and I didn't even really research it as well as I should have, um, but it was, felt very lucky that I just kind of fell into that program, and, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a huge difference, like, coming from FIU's art program, which is very minimal, and most of your classes are only introduction classes. Like I, I majored in video, mm -hmm. time-based media at FIU, and I had to take intro to time-based media three times to get enough credits to, to graduate because there wasn't any advanced classes often uh, in that field. And then going to this other school, like I was way behind as far as like my my education. My undergrad education was so much far superior to like anyone that's like SAIC or 
Raymond, do you think you could have picked up those skills kind of outside of, of studying? I, mean, I, you, I thought I had tried, but I mean, okay. like reading an art forum and going to gallery shows in Miami didn't really fill in those gaps. So it was like a, well, my first semester was a huge crash course out there. Like, wow, I'm so far behind. I mean, my work may be on par with the other people I'm going to school with, but my, my like, knowledge base was, was far back. I really wish that I, I had a better art school education for undergrad or even for high school. I mean, I started late. I didn't have any art education in high school. I kind of found art midway through undergrad. Mm -hmm. Has anybody else got experience of studying art outside of Miami? No, I do, but and, I mean, do you I didn't get educated in Florida. Mm -hmm. Do you mind me asking where you went to school? I'm uh, Montana and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, was there a sort of a, a discernible difference in terms of the, the quality of the art education there? Um, people would come to class there. Okay. <laughs> right? So does that, does that, 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 that have an issue, right? I mean, you yeah. know, people don't come to class and they don't. Right. They came to class on time. They didn't have, look at, here is a huge traffic issue. But, and then a lot of my students here have three or four jobs. Okay, so again, that presumably that's... And, and, and I, I think about point. when I went to school, this is how old I am, one quarter cost $125. How much does it cost now? How much does it cost? How much does it semester cost? Right, it's like $4,000. All right, so I, for $1,000, I could go to school for a year. Yeah. Um, but that's it. I, do you guys realize what happened? I mean, the inflation and the crazy pricing. You should go back to what he's talking about. Well, because, you know, the right. are, what you brought up is you, you went to a fancy trade school to learn how to do something. No, I went to, yeah, you did. You went to a fancy graduate school that taught you all the technical stuff no, that no, hadn't my, even happened here yet. My, my graduate school program had not one technical. What are you talking about? Just taught, said, except for thinking. All, all I taught us was how to think. We didn't learn how there was no gaming courses, there was no social courses. That's not what you just said about your exactly. digital I, media. I, my digital media, that's why you said I had to take intro. No, no, no. I mean, your, grad, your, your graduate digital media. Oh, I didn't mention anything about graduate digital media. I mentioned that for FIU where I had to take intro three times. I mean, I think that, I, I'm not bragging about FIU. FIU is a state school with, you know, a huge med school. Right. Um, so we're there's hanging there's on there. by our teeth to keep art alive. Right. We need some rich benefactor to build us a building and throw money at us, and then we will probably be able to provide a whole lot more desirable tech class. But do you feel that that's, that's part of the issue then? Is it? Is it no, I don't care about that. No, 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 but I mean, it, you know, you think that, that, that what the school needs in order to keep it alive is the money, or is it is it more students who attend every day? Well, frankly, it... I, don't want to teach, I don't want to teach at a school where students are going there because they know that it will help them get paid. I'm not that And I think that that direction is is incredibly destructive. So maybe you're talking about school. You're talking about higher and I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and that's fine. I do think those are different things. So I think it might be worth since the discussion seems to be going in that direction. Maybe it's worth distinguishing between those two things. Um, there's a place where you go and learn how to paint and mix oil and do academic kind of drawing and painting and sculpture and everything else. There's a conceptual side. I don't know when it split off, but it did. And I think what Justin was talking about was a kind of overall lack of preparedness for a higher level of contemporary art education that he sought. It's not to say one is superior. Right. That maybe we should just lay that out there. Right. I mean, education is a broad church, right? Not everybody. Yeah. Not one program is going to fit yeah. everyone. No, and so if people want to just do that, and that's totally legitimate. Well, I think yeah. what we're all pointing to is that there's an interest in the emergence of a new structure that is fulfilling. Um, you know, all cities have a wide, you know, many cities have a wide range of different kinds of art schools that fulfill different needs, and we are developing now uh, a more uh, sophisticated and wider interest in the arts. And so, there is a need to develop this different kind of institution amongst amongst the ones we already have. I mean, I think we recognize that at FIU. Um, yeah. Recently, we hired someone that's a 
to start a private school, not a non-state private school. Well, and that's the thing, you don't like birth like a prestigious school out of thin air and you don't build one up out of nowhere either. Like you said, you know, like the origins of an FIU or a Miami Dade or Broward College, you know, they all come from... Well, like the chip, okay, yeah. so is the criticism oh. coming from the fact that not, not enough good art is coming from here? I mean, the criticism is people who want to buy art locally, but no, it doesn't, have to, like, it doesn't have to no, stamp. There's no major international art school, but is that criticism coming from someone saying that there's no good art being made here? Well, I mean, I'm, I won't speak for anyone, but um, maybe it's more about um, what, what good um, schools can do is attract uh, people from elsewhere. Um, and it is, a, you know, it is a private industry, so it is about paying that, you know, that tuition. Um, the, the conversation about tuition is, I don't, I mean, it's a big conversation, so we don't have to go there, but, um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> oh, we should go there, man. How many people, oh, yeah, yeah. How many people yeah. 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 just took on the, uh, I did, but it went good, like, with the, with the mouse? Oh, Leanna does it once. He's a one trick pony. Oh my god. And then sadness. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the <laughs> So, your premise is that 
you build it and they will come. You build this awesome art school and you're going to get awesome students. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't, a hundred grand. It's drop out of the sky, but of course there's a, an evolution to all these things. Um, um, and uh, people do go to programs um, that have renown that aren't necessarily in major cities because they have good reputations. Um, I mean, God, no one would go to Glasgow for many reasons. Yeah. <laughs> the weather and how miserable. I mean, there's so many reasons to never go to Glasgow, but for whatever reason, it just suddenly starts to attract. I mean, yeah. that yeah. MFA course is crazy, and a lot of the people that come, you know, people come from the States, they come from Berlin, they, I mean, they come from places where, like, 20 years ago, you these people would have been you think they were mentally ill to go to Glasgow and to go to Glasgow School of Art. Like, why, would, why are you here? What the hell is going on? And often they stay as well. I mean, I think that's one one thing that's really enriched the art community right. more generally in the city and in Scotland. It's because these people come and they stay. They, yeah, they, they make they connections. They, they have they opportunities. Stay. There's a the community is wider. Despite no collectors, despite few galleries, they yeah. stay. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Well, isn't that true? Can you answer this? Now, people from places like New York and San Francisco kind of poo-pooed and said, well, 
it's Miami, there's a lot of TNA and blah, 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 and everybody's going to have a good time, but no one's going to take it seriously. Well, I'm sorry, they are taking it seriously. And Miami is starting to be a really good place to be from to make art. Like, I'm a Miami artist gets a certain kind of attention now that mm, didn't happen before. Anything from going to do different things, I know. But I, I do think that we are missing certain intellectual dialogue about good art that's made. But isn't it valid to kind of embrace the situation that, or the scenario, the environment that we have, and maybe say that this is not the best place for this kind of... What? Smart art? No, no not smart art, but not, not a PhD program. I mean, just... I mean, I would hear... Yeah. We don't need one. We I don't think one. we need one. I don't think we need one. I don't think we need one. I heard the same quote from a, a German when I was in, when I was in Germany. She yeah. said well, she said the there. exact same thing. The, the students come back with their degree and they get pumped up for a while and then boom. But these are not they people, just, these are people who are like you know ten or more years yeah. into a career. It's yeah. not you know. No, I'm not. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Really? Yeah, yeah, they have about like like expiration date. Really? Yeah, but that's already yeah. like that's already supposing like you want an infrastructure there that allows you to keep going higher. That's just like ridiculous. Well, it's that notion of how do you feed yourself? Oh no, you need to get higher at the infrastructure game. That's stupid. Well, I don't know if that's exactly what they were saying, but you know, they're looking for a jumping off point to show this work to other people, and the fact is that you know, yeah, I think there are two. Two yeah. avenues we could look at. One of them is um, uh, artists um, making a living and surviving. Maybe that's one idea. That's one idea. And then the other, the other <laughs> idea. Well, well, this, this is what's splintering off. And the other splinter yeah. is um, what what creates um, an engaged community that is thoughtful and um, critical of each other and is interested in the work they're doing and is having discourse and does it not because they think they're going to start selling work to a famous collector but because they're interested in how, how does that sort of thing get um, cultivated so well I mean I'm getting the impression that the, the <coughs> that's not really required in this in, in South Florida you know it's not well, required to do I, that I think that was an idea but I don't think it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like, it's like it's if you really need to have an intellectual discourse about the art that you produce or what art well, intellectual discourse is separate from like, no, 
course is separate yeah. from a structure, but do you feel that... I mean, I think you need to detach it from the PhD program, I do. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the PhD. I'm not saying so, I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm separating it from that. I agree with the people over there that that's a ridiculous thing to talk about, like <laughs> elevating and whatever. I'm just talking about the, the aspect of actually getting into some sort of dialogue that's more... But that's all peer-based. That's completely peer-based. Peers find peers that they want to talk to you on a Yeah, but I mean, what they were talking about, about it earlier, just talking about it like peer-based, but also talking about it uh, openly, you know? It's it's totally open. We just don't have, like, it's like these nodes aren't connecting, you know? Like, there's but really do you feel they should connect? I mean, you find what you want. No, of the course. Thing, the thing that happens here is that there's a lot of institutions that feel this responsibility to give something, but then the masses is different than a fucking conversation. Well, I know, you know, but like, there's really intelligent people here that are in the same brains that leave Miami all the time to talk about different ideas, you know? Yeah, but I'm more interested in the people that stick around. Well, they get that. But there's a lot I mean, of people But it's like, but there's a lot of people that are interested in about it. I don't mind it. It's a mutual basis. It's good. It's a mutual basis. If you find your community, and you deal with your community as intellectually rigorous as you want. But then are you saying that it's good to leave? Is that? I mean, I'm I'm not saying this, I mean, I have a lot of things, so I don't know. I think it's really good to leave. I think, uh, I think, you know, uh, what, what was that, Miss I was just going to say, I've been, I've been thinking about, yeah, leaving, leaving. I keep saying that in my head for the last, like, 10 minutes. And since I left, no, I'm thinking about leaving, but I don't know if that's going to happen. 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 As an artist, I feel like I have to. I feel like I have to in order to stay. Leave and come back, and leave and come back. Leave and come back. This, this. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of any place. Any place you can get, you get to. But I think there's so many things. The museums offer so many free things. Uh, I think Big Mingo's the, you know, the, you know, he's always like somewhere. And you guys all do that. There's free lectures. There's free talks. The museums have them. Um, Cannonball has one, and the universities have one. You just yeah, we have, have them. Yeah, come, but but like, like those, yeah, we'll like spend ten grand to bring somebody in. There'll be ten people in the room. Um, <laughs> you know, like yeah. Really so well, I'm like mean, doing all kinds of things, and it's pretty amazing to me because I did come from somewhere pretty backwater, and this is a miracle to me. Right, 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 right. Also, so you're, you're talking about a lack of interest, like you see a lack of interest. Yeah, but well, I'm not, not going to say that. Look at how interesting I came out here. I mean, I just came back from San Francisco. But there's some, I mean, probably what FIU okay. does, there's a lack of interest. Well, yeah, but that's what you're here. saying. You're saying that you bring people in, no one comes. Yeah. All these free things happen, no one comes. That's a school situation. Yeah, but you could come if you wanted. You know, it's it's a little little But like, like, like the museums, <laughs> they have they have yeah. free programs. I mean, MOCA did. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see what happens. Yeah. They said they were going to be more uh, new Thank you. Well, so I, 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 think I think that this group here, the uh, people that really care about our making, regardless of whether you live here or not, or you're visiting, but you, you're attached, right? And I just came back from San Francisco, and I'm sure most of you know that the tech industry is taking over the city, pushing people out of their apartments. But what I didn't realize is they're pushing all the calendars. And um, I just went to um, a kind of a Whitney Biennale type thing that we used to have in San Francisco every year called Bay Area Now, which would be all the artists from the Bay Area and all the fancy schools, California College of Arts, the Art Institute, blah, blah, blah. And it was the worst show I've ever seen. Um, two of the galleries that I know of have disappeared off the face of the planet because tech people don't really like art. They want to be entertained and they want to eat. So restaurants have come in to take it over. So, the primary so that, that uh, environment is no longer hospitable to a thriving Not at artist all. community. Artist spaces, big conglomerate okay. spaces where there used to be studios, are gone. Right, right. And they are being rented at three and four thousand dollars a month by well, these people. You know, so we have an obligation in a way to keep nurturing this DIY. I love the way you talked about it too. Seeing here because it's something very special and. You know, my family that are art makers that come from the Bay Area to Miami to visit, they're blown away by the energy here. Totally. 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 Totally.
think it's interesting in the DIY movement is kind of like indicative of like the growth of the society, the growth of the community. Mm -hmm. So like if DIY is the same thing, it's like kind of wild west and things. But it's not even booming, it's part it's been part of this history. Yeah, it's just part of the existing community. So it's part of the it's part of the new, it's like yeah. the ecology yeah. here. Yeah. Saying earlier, um, Willie, is that um, right as the city becomes more sophisticated over time, new needs develop. You know, what is sort of happening is that there's an interest in developing more alternative education structures that are starting to fill these gaps in a DIY way. Liz, no, of course it's not. Yeah. But but that's, no, I, 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 I mean, uh, many of us are. Uh, there's an interest in. In this, it's not like it's brand new, but there's an interest in filling gaps and yeah. and what happens. Yeah, but it's not even about filling gaps. It's just like you know, our community does not want to look outside of itself, so it only stays within an art context. So you only like swallow what art institutions give you. However, the conversations is like much more intellectual or rigorous conversations about art are still happening in the city. They're just happening in different. Programs. Sure. So yeah. Media programs, philosophy programs, film programs. Sure. But no one's, you know. No so is that no something that needs to be no transferred also to happening within contemporary art? Uh, these discussions are going on in philosophy and film in other places in the yeah. city. Is that something that then should also be happening with institutions that deal with that? Or are you saying that it doesn't matter yeah, that they're not happening? deal with it because it's it isn't it like an art topic. You know what I mean? Like there's people talking about. No. It is like an art topic. It's like a. You know, you're looking. You're looking at in an art museum.
it's not like it's not like here's the answer for what you're after. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like this rich person should support this. Mm -hmm. It's not like they have the means and we have the want. I mean, that's like a really blunt force. Look at looking at it. I mean, it. I mean, you have to get exposed to it because a lot of people don't even know the effects of these exactly the conversation. That's the, that's the difference between those the, the, the different kinds of people. There's a lot of different people. I think it is. There's nothing. This in terms of people kind of educating self education like 50 years ago, and so just I mean, I was looking at a lot of really, really crappy quotes about you just Google, you know, like quotes on education, and, and there are a lot of you some terrible stuff, but um, there were quotes from people like um, like Frank Zappa and whatever saying, you know, if, if I want an education, I go to the library, and you think, okay. Yeah, but then what are they doing to the libraries? They're closing the library down. If you want to self-educate outside of it, you, but not all of this stuff is Googleable, right? It's just not. It's not on Google. It's not on you know. And there's stuff. There's things that I used. I mean, being outside of an educational institution now, it's difficult for me to do any sort of serious academic research because I just don't have the tools anymore. I can't look these articles up anymore because I don't have a subscription to JSTOR, which sounds ridiculous, but it just, like, it just means there's like a cap on what I can write about within sitting at my desk at Bass. So... I guess that's the talking about access. Why is that access like so much? Like, why can't you be on JSTOR now? Like, why else? What is the limitless, like, uh, like thing the whole thing has from, like, having had access to just one day? Well, for right? everyone, you mean. Exactly. I mean, well, maybe one day we will, which would be amazing, yeah. but I doubt it, because there's money in it. Yeah, like, so, like, is it, is it, does, does devaluing, yes. does, does giving access broadly to an intellectual conversation say, of, like, any subject, does that devalue the the, the no, I don't think it devalues it, but I think one thing, I mean, you know, I listen to a lot of discussion about how difficult it is to be an artist, and it's, yeah, like, there is no doubt it's really tough, but it's not super fun being an, an academic who's not within an academic institution. Like, when you write articles, you're not paid for them, and you could have spent months working on it, maybe not the whole time, but you just, there's no... You know, so that, and I think that is part of the reason why, I mean, my, my PhD thesis, I really want, I really want the one person in the universe who's ever going to want to read that to be able to read it, but I am not letting them do that. First of all, because it's, it's got stuff in it that's copyrighted, but secondly, maybe I can publish it as a book and that person might have to buy it, you know. And then my four years and my student loan will have, you know, 20 pounds taken off it. Well, that's what so, part of it is. I mean, it's not, you know, it's like what's in the way. You pay for information, but then it's like, can't you, can't you get that information just out of life? You know, I mean, like, that's that's why I'm reticent about it. I mean, there's probably other reasons too, if I'm being honest, but like, I, I'm not into that right now. Like, How I do you think that it's sort of like, I just think it's become such a racket. You're not into the knowledge in, industry. In this country, I yeah. think it's become such a racket that yeah. it's just. Right. So then, there we go. Yes. Yeah, so then there's also. So this leads us to this, right? I don't know. Do you want to talk? You may know more about this. Movie. No. Well, um, so uh, the First High Quality Foundation um, University um, is one of many alternative um, education art schools, um, and this school is um, is a branch off of the artist group. First High Quality Foundation, and it is essentially brings in, or it asks, um, it asks artists and writers and contemporary art thinkers to um, participate in a series of crits. Well, like a, well, like a in a semester uh -huh. style. Yeah, but they ask them to do it for free, mm -hmm. uh, and the attendees. Um, and this is based in New York City, but of course there are schools like this all over the place, and um, it's a model for completely um, free 
It's cool. That is not based upon a degree, but um, just a place to think and talk and. Yeah. So yeah. you're not getting accredited, whatever. But. No. Right. Well, they they can't exist because they can't exist for free unless all those people have real jobs. So it's kind of, I mean, it sounds great and it's a wonderful idea. All of those people that are contributing to this are yeah, but probably teaching. The whole point of it is that they're going to have real jobs anyway. Yeah. They go to school. Right. So it's either yeah. go to school and own more money or just have a job, live in a city, and just have access Burr. to this stuff and have access yeah. to people you don't normally have access to. Yeah. And these are all like Cooper kids that got angry that Cooper started charging tuition. <laughs> also. <laughs> <laughs> Because that seems like maybe that's 
the yeah, I mean the, the 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 funding from both public and private um, foundations and and funding bodies is very robust. I would say, if anyone else wants to, you can look behind you on the wall. It's <laughs> 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 my job. <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, well, I mean, in terms of this interest in alternative education and filling the gaps or not filling the gaps, is this something that is more interesting now in Miami than it ever has been? Do you happen to see that? I, I personally happen to see that more often, but I'm... Well, there's more of a demand for yeah. gap filling. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been, I've been here less than a year. I have no idea. <laughs> is anybody else? Well, wasn't Craig Robbins trying to start a school? Yes. Yes, yeah, so like, I don't know, I think the idea that, you know, I mean, and just... Tell us about it. Tell us about it. Craig Robbins brought in the art director from Columbia. Whatever, man, it was going to be a joint project with the UN school, <laughs> and that shit tanked. It's just like, yo, we got all these names, and then we never, like... So why, it, why did it take? a small publication. Yeah. It was a series of private discussions, or were they public? A bunch of powwows, and nothing came from because a real art school takes, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, so like time. years and years of building up an infrastructure and tolerating. Yeah, I think it just had you know, all sorts of just like quasi institutional bullshit, like that kind of ruined the project. But uh, but alternative situations are are very interesting. I mean, I think that that is starting to grow here. That's why we're all here at this. I mean, we couldn't wait to get here. <laughs> no, seriously, to, to talk to people about you know what's going on here and. I think that that is growing in Miami. But are those discussions still happening at the institution, though, like with the students and stuff? Or well, a lot of our students are sitting right here. My class came. Well, thanks yeah. for coming. I mean, they're participating in all these things. You know, they if they if they if they're interested. Well, that's a really good sign. All around. Yeah. Okay. So cool. we're here. Well, yeah. I mean, we can't. We don't really like as a professor. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't know much, and the 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 longer I've been in this, the think the less I think I know. But is that good? I don't know. Is that good? I, no one is this good. But but <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it's a hell of a. That's what I learned. But I don't have I don't have the end all. There's there's information coming from everybody else, and any you know any time I'd like to have them hear what other people say because. You can't be an artist when you're sitting in a closet. I guess you can be. My neighbor thought so. I had an argument with her the other day. Like, you don't need to go to school. You don't need to look at art. And why do you do that? And why do you do that? Because it's fun. Um, you know, me. whatever. I'm kind of one of the young from here. I recently graduated from Dash. So, like, the interest here, like, I've seen it for four years, how it's growing. But for the fact that the promotion, it's not reaching out anywhere besides the design district. Most people really don't know the design district for the fact of all their renovations that's going through. Some people are even moving out into different places. But Is that very, a very passive perspective? I would say yes. It, it will be one of the passive perspectives that I have. I've noticed that the Locust Project was actually down the street over there, across from uh, uh, Second Avenue, uh, mm -hmm. Northeast. So, like, once they moved here, most people were just like, "Okay, you know, I'm gonna have to transfer here and see what's going on." But all of that is based on also society changing itself. <coughs> Technology now helps promote, but sometimes it might give a little hindrance to what comes out. Some people have, you know, their privacy limits. So, I don't want this coming out, but it's still the anyway. Is your primary question about access to the information about what's going on? The access to the information is it's limited within the community, within the design district. Like I had no idea Dash was right here until I actually got accepted into the school and people were just like, where do you go? You know, Dash. And it was like, okay, that's amazing. Because they've heard about it, but they don't know the actual experience that goes through it. So there's disconnect in public aid in the interest of the general public to the arts and culture activities. Yes. There's a really big thing in North Miami just proved that. Well, I will say that, like, I think that, like, honestly, like, I don't know if it's, I think I mentioned it before in the, one of the past talks, but uh, with the, you know, there's a, I feel like the art community here is very insular in ways, you know, I don't want to say that, 
But I think that, you know, when I see, when we go to all these events, as, like that, Just to point this at you, as opposed to, like, going to MoMA with, like, 10,000 people in in a day, or... Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, it's sort of like with the same community of people at all the same events. And sort of like, we all, like, the group of us, we know what's going on. We're very conscious of it, and we, we're active in promote, we're active in telling other people about it, we're, you know, we're promoting it amongst our friends, but I think that there's sort of something lost in trying to communicate that to the general audience. And I think that it is true. We are a new city, and we sort of, like, this, like, you know, this art going public has an own, this discourse has sort of just, just recently been happening. Over the past, you know, few years, where the or the public is sort of interested in art or whatever they think it is, and so you know, you have like Winwood just blew up over the past two years, and now you can't even go there without just you know walking through the streets. It's sort of just insane, but like so that's what's a general, general public. What's a general, what's a general public? Well, no. Well, well I, I think Winwood is a fucking awesome example of greatness. Like art being <laughs> people, like the public being interested in art is Winwood. Yeah, but like that's actually like, the best.
also have a, a, a population that lives here all year round. Yes, we do. And to say that population still, like, they're not really that interested in being intellectual and thinking. It's just, I, I don't, but that's a big thing. That's, that's so reductive, well, though. Yeah, you know, so there's people who are interested in sure. sure.
point you in a direction and get you excited about the thing you're doing, and then go off and hopefully you plug in like you pick it, you know, maybe your thing is you can pick it up and you figure it out on your own. Maybe you go to a good MFA program and go to another city, but it's like all a BFA program can do is just point you a direction and hope, you know, and kind of get you like going. Yeah, but why should, should they, why, why should that be the responsibility of the program? You know, like all the BFA program, if you want to make art, you make art. And if you want to keep learning about art, you keep learning about art. There's no so responsibility on no, education or education. Like, like, there's like, way too much fucking pressure. <laughs> like, why should a teacher be there's responsible on the paper for learning this? No, all they do is like, they point you in the direction. They just show you shit. You know, you have to deal. And then you learn about it and you get curious. And then mm -hmm. that's so, it. I mean, if we're saying, like, what's, you know, the level of, like, my MBA education is, like, a BFA program can point you in a good direction and say, like, there's shit for you. A BFA program here did a really beautiful thing for me. It made me very frustrated with education. <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautiful because I was, like, grow as I grew older. Like what I learned from all these people. Was that was that frustration? Was that frustration there would be no exploration? Exactly. Yeah, it's just like you're bored and you're frustrated. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Because this is like your living life and you figured it out through art. Yeah. And that's that's the most beautiful thing anyone can show you. Thank you. Vote for the Someday I will. For some office. Yeah. <laughs>